Shalom, my friends, from here in the Holy Land. It's about to be the Festival of Booths. So I wanted to show you my sukkah. It's amazing in Israel that on this holiday, you see the Bible come alive in the Holy Land. Wherever you go, there are just booths, as we say in Hebrew, uh, sukkahs that are set up all over. We have the palm branches on top, just as you can see here, just as the Bible tells us. And we shake the four species as well, just as the Bible says. It's a tradition that the Jewish people have kept alive throughout exile, throughout wherever they were, just as the Bible says that this is what we're supposed to do. After Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement comes Sukkot, the uh, festival of booths, where on Rosh Hashanah, we pray and we are kind of in the spiritual world. And on Yom Kippur, we're in the spiritual world, fasting the Day of Atonement, starting new. And then comes Sukkot, the holiday of Sukkot, where we bring the spirit down to earth, where we bring all of our prayers and spiritualities. And we don't fast, we bring it down to earth in this physical world, but we're still saying, Lord, we believe in oh. you. This world is yours. Mommy, no, and there's no security without your Mommy, security. No. I see water spilled over there. That's okay. And so in this holiday, um, what we're remembering is when they filled up water, right? In the uh, temple, they would pull water from a place called the Mashiloch that we still have today in Jerusalem. And they say that when they pulled up water to bring on and put onto the Mizbeach, they would have prophecy. Everyone who was there had prophecy just from pulling the water. Normally, we put wine on the Mizbeach, on the altar, but on this holiday, we put water on the altar. And when they pulled it up, everyone in Jerusalem had prophecy. And they said, if you haven't been to the drawing of water on Sukkot, then you've never seen true joy and happiness. It was a huge spiritual festival. And so today we still continue to pray for rain. This was a time that all the nations came and prayed for rain, prayed for their physical sustenance, that God would support them in their growing of their fields and they'd have food and everything that they needed. And so in a lot of ways, this was the holiday that they would use to see the tangible impact of their prayers for the following year. That if they prayed well, they would get the physical sustenance they needed for their crop. You can see that we're still putting our final touches on our sukkah. That's my husband and my son that they're getting ready. Um, and for the next seven days, just as the Bible says, we're going to eat, we're going to drink, we're going to live in this hut, in this sukkah. And it's also to remember when the Jewish people were wandering in, in when they left Egypt on their way to Israel in the desert, um, they lived in huts and they had the cloud of glory surrounding them, Ananea Kavod. And so this is reminding us that, you know, just as the Israelites, while they were traveling through the desert, might have seemed very dangerous. They didn't have water and there were wild animals, but God protected them. Today, it can seem like we have our homes and so we're secure, but we're saying, no, we trust in God to protect us. There's no protection without God. So happy Sukkot. I'll continue to update you and I'll give you a little view of my sukkah here um, that you can see. Okay, here's my husband and daughter. Say hi. <laughs> putting together the sukkah. Here are the walls, the temporary walls. You want to say hello? <laughs> hello. And here are the palm branches for the roof. Happy Sukkot. Happy Sukkot. You want to say hi, honey? Hi. Hi. Happy Sukkot. To all the people in Facebook land. Hello. <laughs> all right. Happy Sukkot from here in Israel.